Hi everybody, it's Brad with Big Family Homestead, and in this video we are talking about rain catchment systems. How we set them up, how we plan them, talk a little bit about what's what and this and that and who knows what else, but we're gonna get to it right now. So on our homestead, having an abundant, cheap source of water is very, very important. We don't wanna be spending a lot of money putting it into the garden, feeding the animals, storage water for the what if kind of scenario. As a matter of fact, I think I just read an article recently on a, on a city in Ohio that their whole municipal water supply was shut down for weeks because of contaminants. Well, that is where our rain catchment system comes in. Saves you money, always have water on hand, you can filter it, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So gonna talk a little bit about how we decided and how we planned and set up hours. So I'm going to show you my setup first and then I'm going to go through a few of the uh, reasons why and hum, uh, some of the planning stuff. So let's go. Here's my system. In a nutshell what we've got going on here, that blue barrel is actually a large filter. I've got sand and biochar, rocks, gravel, made a, a, an awesome filter there. So the water comes in off the roof into the blue barrel and down into these 275 gallon tanks that are painted black to keep algae down. The green hose there goes into this black hose as an overflow in case things get nutty. Then tank one goes into tank two, each with its own overflow. And tank two goes into tank three. Now I've got two 275s and one 300, so that is a lot of water. All right, a couple considerations as you're planning and getting ready to put your system together. One of the first things you need to consider is what are your needs? What are you gonna be using this water for? Are you gonna be watering a garden? Is this just for storage emergency kind of thing? Uh, what are your needs? Um, basically, ready.gov, the uh, emergency people, they say that for a, an emergency type situation that you should have a minimum of one gallon of water per person, per day, okay? Now, obviously, if you live in a hotter climate, you're probably gonna need more. You need to take that into consideration just because you're gonna be using more. Uh, pregnant moms need more. Um, what are your needs? Basically, get a piece of paper and write them down. Say, okay, I wanna have a garden. That's probably gonna take X amount of gallons per blah, blah, blah. I wanna have storage. Figure it out. And, and basically, you can go to your, uh, your water bill, see what you're using. Now that'll, that'll get a little bit, you know, in your face scary real quick because we use thousands of gallons of water and don't even think about it. You're never gonna get to that level unless you've got a, just a massive, massive storage facility. Uh, but just take into consideration what you're gonna actually be needing and what you'll be using and what you want to save for storage. Next up, what kind of tanks, what kind of storage containers are you actually going to be using? Are you going to use these plastic 55 gallon barrels like that one there? You're going to use these 275, 300 gallon uh, containers? Basically what my recommendation is don't use any, any, anything that is not food grade. Now these containers, I actually got mine off Craigslist pretty cheap. I got them for $40 a piece and they only had animal fat in them. They were basically, for, they, they came from a company that was using them to actually make soap. So because it was a food product, technically, they had to have food grade containers and I can clean them out very easily, which is exactly what I've done. Clean it out, wash it out, bleach, then wash it back out, yada, yada, yippee, skippy. But consider what you're going to need for your storage. Um, also too, Tommy, the Carolina Prepper, uh, gave me this tip and I, I mentioned it in another video, but uh, bears worth mentioning here that uh, these 55 gallon drums, uh, I guess car washes, get them loaded with soap. And if you ask nice, that sometimes they will let you have them for free. So that's pretty cool. Free is always, 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 always good. Now again, these tanks are painted black, but it's not just paint. This is a little thing that I learned the hard way last season. I basically forgot to get some of the water out of these tanks and they froze. Well, what happens? Expansion, contraction. It pushed in, pushed out the whole nine yards and all my paint fell off. <laughs> so I learned my lesson in that they make a flexible coating that you can spray on here. This isn't actually 
paint. It's the uh, flex seal kind of stuff that you can put on the ends of tools for grips and whatnot, but it sprays right on and that stretches. So it's not gonna come you know, flaking off at the, uh, the slightest uh, you know, freeze moment there. Now where you actually physically put your rain catchment system is also very important. I've chosen an area of my house that does not get a whole lot of sunlight uh, and that's mainly so that it'll help algae growth keep, you know, be kept down at a very minimum. Also, like I said, the black paint helps with the algae growth, but you know, this is not exactly the most attractive looking thing. I wouldn't want to stick this out in front of the house. It looks ugly. So we don't want to create an eyesore uh, for anybody, especially, I mean, us and all the neighbors and all that. So we've chosen an area that's very, very, you know, you don't even notice it. If Even if you're in our yard, there's a tree kind of blocking it. And so consider where you're physically going to put it. Also, in terms of where you're going to physically put it, consider the amount of roof space you're going to need. You don't want to have just like a four foot section that's feeding your tank unless your tank is very, very small. The more roof area that you have, the better. However, make sure your overflow is really, really good if you've got a lot of water funneling into your system. Now, another thing to take into consideration is the water usage. How are you gonna get the water out of your tanks, out of your containers? Are you gonna use a pump? Are you gonna use a hand pump? Are you just gonna attach a hose to the bottom and figure out the fittings and stuff like that? You definitely have to sit down and plan that out beforehand. You don't wanna go, oh my gosh, I got a thousand gallons of water here. Uh, how do I use it? Now, a word on your gutters. Now, here's the thing. My house has really nice gutter system up there, and it's got the whole thing where it keeps the leaves out of it and all that, and that's really awesome. But for my purposes, I wanna make sure that I was getting enough water into my system, so I had to actually dam up the gutters up over here. Yeah, you can see that up over here. Now, what I did, uh, because I didn't want to make anything permanent uh, and I may change my mind, the system may need to grow or shrink based on whatever our needs are. So I actually took um, a couple tube socks and I filled them with regular old play sand and I kind of made a little bit of a, uh, well, a dam. I just shoved it all in there and tied it off and it's up there as a dam on that side and then there's another whole leg over here that I went far out so all that water funnels down into my system, into my filter. Bam, yada yada, yippee skippy. Now just a quick word on my blue filter up here. What I did was I basically got this thing and um, on the bottom, I'm gonna show you here in a second, but I've got basically inside of it, there's PVC that goes up like this and then it's a T and there's branches of PVC pipe in it like that. We'll all have tiny, tiny little pinholes drilled in them. That sits right on the bottom, right there. And what happens is after it's gone through all my filter material, it gets through those pinholes and goes into this tank. Now, is the filter necessary? Probably not. I mean, I'm never gonna use this water for anything except the garden and outdoor stuff unless I'm gonna be filtering it with my big Berkey filter anyway. So, but it's just an extra layer of safety, you know, comfort, you know, whatever, whatever you wanna call it. I'm, I always try to do over things way over, so uh, the filter. Now, what's inside that filter, I've got basically about one third of it is regular old sand. Then another third of it is activated charcoal that I made here at my yard. Uh, so it's running through the sand, running through the charcoal. Then we've got gravel, gravel, different varying la layers of gravel and pebbles, and then into my PVC, and then into the tank. And there, as promised, is where the filter dumps into the tank. Yet another consideration is how you're gonna clean the tanks. Yes, you paint them black so that the algae growth is at a very, very minimal uh, kind of ditty, yo. Uh, but you're still gonna periodically need to clean your tanks. And so may I recommend one of these guys right here. Check this out. It hooks on to your hose and this is separate, this little thing. And this is really nice because it's angled. So it takes the stress off of this fitting right here. Uh, I've read online that a lot of people were having a problem with these, this fitting breaking. But basically this is an extendable, you can, you can extend it. And this is what's cool. This is high pressure. Well, look at that, check that out and watch this, bam. So let's say that you're in cleaning your tank like that. You can clean the underside, yay, isn't that awesome? and use it with a regular old garden hose and it does a really, really great job. All right, so one final thing I think you need to 
take into consideration when you're planning, designing, getting ready to build your rain catchment system. And this one's a little bit nutty to me because frankly, I think it's insane, but check your local laws. There are some areas that will not allow it. I think it's nutty and it needs to change. I mean, who the heck gives them the right to say I can or cannot use the rainwater falling out of the sky that God provided, hit my house, whatever. Just check your local laws. So there it is, people. Set up your own rain catchment system based on your needs, what resources you have available, but do it. It's gonna save you money. You're gonna be prepared for those what if kind of scenarios, all kinds of things that are very, very, very good for you. So anyway, please don't forget to share the video. It does greatly help my family out. I'm Brad with Big Family Homestead, and you have an amazing day.